Now, valency of hydrogen can be either a plus one or a minus one. Okay. If it is plus one, it is known as a hydrogen. But if it is a minus one, it is known as a hydride. Okay. Okay. And the way we wrote it as the valencies, okay, I wrote it for you in such a way that all the one valency comes together. Uh, okay. Okay. Then from beryllium to calcium, they have a plus two valency. Okay. Okay. Then from boron to thallium, they have a plus three valency. Mm -hmm. Then carbon to lead. Okay. They have a plus four on top out here, a plus four and a plus two out here. And generally, these guys have a plus two valency. Okay. Then we come to nitrogen. So all of them are going to have a negative three valency. Okay. But when you come down, it becomes a metal. So metals are generally taken as a plus three. Mm -hmm. And then on top, five valency is also possible, like PCL3 and PCL5. Okay. Here, all of them are going to have a minus two valency. The last one would be a minus or a plus two. But together with it, it can show a plus four valency or a plus six valency also. Uh, all of them? All of them except oxygen. Oxygen okay. shows only minus two. Oxygen shows a plus two valency if it is in combination with fluorine. Oh, okay. Okay. And then these guys negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one. And these are all zero valency. These are all noble gases. Okay. Okay. Uh, in the junior classes, we do study that they are unreactive gases. But in the senior classes, we will study that, you know, some of them under the right conditions of temperature and pressure and catalyst do show some reactions. Okay. Then, now these are the, these are some ones that can be used and the valencies are mentioned. Like when you are writing iron, then the valencies would be mentioned in the compound as iron 2 or iron 3, which valency has been used. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like copper can have two valencies. So in the question, it is mentioned if it is a copper 1 or a copper 2. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the valencies of these are variable, okay, they keep on changing and the variable valency is given to us in the Roman. Okay. Okay, now let's look at uh, the first one. Why do they have a uh, one valency? If I look at hydrogen, hydrogen in its outermost shell has only one electron when you make that circle diagram. Mm -hmm. So it can take, it can either lose electron. If it loses electron, it just becomes a proton. Mm -hmm. But if it gains electron, if it gains electron, it becomes two electrons like this. And now this becomes what? It takes up the noble gas configuration of helium. Oh. Okay. So every element tries to do what is, they try to take the noble gas configuration to become stable. Like if mm -hmm. I, if we take an example of sodium, sodium is the 11th element in the periodic table. So 11th element in the periodic table, if I write the electronic configuration, if I write the electronic configuration, it has two electrons in the innermost shell, okay, then eight electrons in the middle shell, 
and then one electron in the outermost shell. So what okay. does it do is it loses this electron. Okay. When it loses the electron, what has happened? Just take a look. Huh? Sodium has become like this. Okay. And then it has eight electrons. Now, eight electrons is a complete shell. And a complete shell is a noble gas configuration. Now, this attains the noble gas configuration of neon. Now, okay. it has become stable. Okay. If we look at chlorine, okay, I need to, I think so, I need to make these diagrams and explain the valencies also, okay, how the valency is derived generally, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so let's, 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 let's write the, let's write uh, the first 20 elements so that I can make you do the, well, that also. The first 20 okay. elements are hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, okay, and then magnesium, and then, uh, no, lithium, uh, lithium, below lithium will come our sodium, okay, after sodium it is magnesium, then aluminium, and then silicon, okay, let's take this one only, and we'll come to know, now, these elements have an atomic number, okay, atomic number of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, what is an atomic number? Um, the, I'm not sure what it represents. The atomic number is equals to the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom okay and okay. the protons are the positively charged particles yes and this will be equals to the number of electrons which are present in the shells in a neutral uh, atom the number of protons will be equal to the number of electrons mm -hmm. okay now we have shells okay the K shell and the L shell and the M shell. The K shell can accommodate a maximum of two electrons. L shell can accommodate a maximum of eight. M can accommodate eight. So okay. if I if I write the where the electrons are, the first circle hydrogen has only one electron, so it is one. Helium two. Now it is complete. It can take only two electrons. Now mm -hmm. the third electron, okay, of lithium would go to L. The fourth electron is like this. The fifth electron goes to L. The sixth electron goes to L. The seventh electron goes to L. The eighth electron goes to L. The ninth electron goes to L. The tenth electron goes to L. Now, L can take a maximum of eight electrons. Mm -hmm. So now it cannot take any more. And sodium has a total of 11 electrons. So mm -hmm. two electrons go to K, eight to L, and one to M. Same okay. likewise out here, two, eight, two, and then... 2 plus 8, 10, plus 3, 13, and 2 plus 8, 10, plus 4, 14. This is a simple way of making the electronic configuration. Okay. okay. Now, hydrogen gains an electron to become like helium. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so its valency can be a minus 1. But if it loses one electron to become like a proton, its valency becomes plus one. Okay. Helium, it is completely filled. It does not want anyone to come in. It does not want anyone to go out. It is stable on its own. So its valency is a zero. 
But now lithium has one electron and its closest noble gas is helium. Okay. So it would lose one electron to have a gap configuration just like helium. So when <clears throat> any substance loses an electron, its valency becomes plus one. Okay. Now this one, if you look at the noble gases, okay, one noble gas is here and the other noble gas is here. So what do you think? What would it try to do? Lose two electrons or gain six electrons? Uh, lose two electrons? Yeah. If it loses two electrons, a positive two. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is three. Now, what would this try to do? It ha Either it loses three electrons and becomes like helium or gains five electrons to become like neon. What would it do? Loses three electrons. Loses three electrons. Now this one neither loses nor gains, but what it does is it shares four electrons. When it shares four electrons, okay, it becomes noble gas configuration like neon. Okay. Oh, okay. Now, the fifth onwards, it is easier to gain three electrons than to lose five electrons. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a negative three. It is easier to lose two electrons than to gain. Sorry, it's easier to gain two okay. electrons than to lose six electrons. See, mm -hmm. if it goes from here, if it goes from here to here, eight. It has to do what? Gain two electrons. And if it goes from here to here, what does it have to do? Lose six electrons. So gaining two electrons would be easier. So valency yes. is negative two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Seven, that means it would try to gain one electron. And eight is a zero. So you have got what it have what actually happens. One is there, means it would lose to go to the noble gas configuration. Two means it would lose two electrons because gaining six electrons is difficult. Three means it would lose three electrons because gaining five electrons is difficult. And four generally just shares the electrons. Okay. Okay, got it? Yeah. Now, the outermost electrons, these electrons which are in the outermost shell, these electrons which are in the outermost shell, okay, they are known as valence electrons. They are known as which electrons? Valence electrons. Because they are related to the valency of a substance. They are related to the? Uh, valency of a substance. Okay. Now, the way we have written it out here, gives you an idea why I wrote everyone as plus one. Out here, all these elements in the valence shell have one electron. In the mm -hmm. outermost shell, they have only one electron. So it's easier for them to lose one electron. Here, everyone has two electrons in the outermost shell. So it is easier for them to lose two electrons. So, wrote it for you in such a that you know, it becomes easier for you to remember. Mm -hmm. Now, all these have three electrons in the outermost shell. Okay. Okay, here we go. Why is my alarm ringing right now? <laughs> <laughs> now, okay. And in, in this group, all of them have four electrons in the outermost shell. Mm -hmm. So that is why they tend to share the electrons, okay, and gain the noble gas configuration. Now, mm -hmm. when I come to the nitrogen group, they all have five electrons in the outermost shell. Okay, that is why it tends to gain three electrons. Oh, I made six out here. It tends to gain three electrons to attain the noble gas configuration. Okay. Mm -hmm. In this oxygen group, 
it has a total of six electrons. So it tends to do what? Gain two electrons to attain the noble gas configuration. And then you would have guessed this one. So in the fluorine group, how many electrons should be there in the outermost shell? Seven. Yeah. And in the helium group, how many electrons should be there in the outermost shell? Uh, none. Oh, two, because it's two? already complete. Two in helium. After helium, all of them have eight electrons in the outermost shell. Okay. And this two is termed as a duplet structure. And an eight is termed as an octet structure. Okay. Okay. So are the valencies also clear? Yes, they are. Now, okay. Now, after this, we come to something new. 